They are coming. I can feel them scratching inside my mind. Scratching, screaming, running. So many. So, so many voices. They're coming for us. Flesh, body, and soul. Hi everyone, NK here. And today, we're going over the greatest threat in the 40k galaxy. The Tyranids. The Tyranids are an extragalactic insectoid species connected via a synaptic hive mind. Their goal is to consume everything and evolve. There is no concrete origins of the Tyranids. The only thing that we know is that they come from outside the galaxy and they were attracted to our galaxy because of a psychic backlash that came from the Ultima Segmentum. They arrived in the galaxy in 745 M41 and proceeded to attack and consume some worlds. One inquisitorial ship visiting the world of Tyran was confused when they noticed that the ocean planet was now an empty dead rock in space. Upon investigating the world, Inquisitor Phytus Critman named the new threat after the world of Tyran, the Tyranids. Afterwards, he went off to other worlds to warn them of this new threat, but it didn't go well. FUCKING DAMN IT! They managed to figure out that the High Fleet, High Fleet Behemoth, was heading towards McCrag the home world of the 13th Legion, now chapter, the Ultramarines. They tried to send a psychic message through the warp to warn them, but they couldn't because the Tyranids have an interesting passive ability called the Shadow in the Warp, which basically disrupts a psyker's connection to the warp. So they raced to the world and somehow managed to get there before the Hive Fleet. The Ultramarines mounted a defense and got their asses headed to them with their first company being wiped out. as to how they won, but let's just say it involved the sacrifice of a Gloriana-class ship. And so, that was the end of the Tyranids. Wait, wait what? Really? Oh, well, uh, scratch that. That was the end of the first Tyrannic War. 248 years later, High Fleet Kraken invaded, and this one was a bit more strategic compared to Behemoth. Most notably, making the use of Gene Sealer cults. Forgive me for not mentioning them in the Favorite Army video. Gene Sealer cults are cults who worship the Tyranids as star gods and are led by a Tyranid life form known as a Gene Sealer. Now, how this process would work is that a Gene Sealer would infiltrate a world, find some victims, and infect them with their own DNA. The infected individuals will see the Gene Sealer as a divine being and start worshiping it. They will then begin to breed with each other and give birth to abominations. This will continue until they get to the fourth generation, who look almost exactly like humans. Then the fourth generation will integrate into society, gathering anything that they can in preparation for the arrival of the star gods. Then, when the time is right, they will plunge the world into civil war. Mutated abominations flooding the streets, killing the impure non-believers. Whether or not they succeed doesn't matter. The planet's defenses will be weakened, allowing easy pickings for the Tyranids. The most notable battle during this war was when the High Fleet attacked the craft world of Viandin. The craft world was about to be destroyed until it was saved by the exiled Prince Uriel, who arrived with his fleet of Corsair ships and defeated the Hive Tyrant leading the attack and driving back the Tyranids. Thanks to the efforts of Imperials, Tau, Eldar, and Necron forces, not working together of course, High Fleet Kraken was shattered into multiple smaller High Fleets. And overall, the galaxy was once again safe from the Tyranid threat. 
Until four years later, when High Fleet Leviathan showed up and began the third tyrannical war. Hey yo, what the fuck? Round three, and this time with the biggest High Fleet yet. High Fleet Leviathan. This time, they were invading beneath the galaxy, attacking multiple worlds that were scattered apart. The most notable battle was the Battle of Ball, Ball being the home world of the Blood Angels. When this happened, the Blood Angels and their successor chapters were called back to defend the planet. As they were fighting for their lives, suddenly the galaxy literally split in half as the Cicatrix Maledictum opened up and received unexpected as well as unintentional help from the forces of Korn. More specifically, the greater demon Kabanda, who saved the Blood Angels because if anyone is going to kill the Sons of Sanguinius, it's going to be him. Another notable event that happened was that Inquisitor Critman, remember him, came up with a plan of stalling Leviathan that in hindsight was a very idiotic plan. He ended up leading the bulk of the fleet to the Arctarius Sector, and in the sector was a massive orc empire. Now if you don't know anything about the orcs and the Tyranids, you would have thought that this was a genius idea, making your enemies fight against each other to at least weaken them. But if you do know anything about the orcs and the Tyranids, you will realize that this is a god awful idea. Crypton basically took two species that literally get stronger the longer they fight and pit them against each other. This was the end of the Third Tyrannic War, but because of Pritman's actions, the Tyranids and Octarius would win against the Orcs, and as of currently, the Fourth Tyrannic War has begun. Now, if you didn't think that there was going to be a Fourth Tyrannic War, you're either stupid or you've been sleeping under a rock for the past two months. I won't say anything specific, but things aren't looking too well for the whole galaxy, and that's saying something. This is what I mean when I said that the Tyranids are the galaxy's greatest threat, and I'm really happy that GW is actually putting more focus on them. Despite how grim things may look, many of the factions can hold their own against the Tyranids. There is one faction in particular whose combat doctrine is perfect against the Tyranids. But... We'll have to wait until next time. Until then, I've been NK. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.